Welcome to Legendary Physique. In this video, I'm going to be speaking with Jerry Branham, whose Applied Metabolics newsletter is the only one I subscribe to for the latest information on training and nutrition. Now, the January issue was really great. It had at least five articles with tons of information in it. And I particularly like the article on uh, rice and pea protein versus uh, whey protein. There's a lot of great information on that that you'll want to know. And then I like the fact that in a TMAO article, uh, I learned that I'm not killing myself by eating meat. So you've got to read that one, too. Finally, I really like the one exercise gone bad, in particular about the amount of cardiovascular uh, work or running that, that maximizes the benefits. <clears throat> and that it's been shown that only 1 to 1 1.4 hours uh, spread over two or three days at no more than five miles per hour is all you need to do for the maximum health benefits. Right. So there's always great information. And here's Jerry with me. Jerry, welcome. Hi, how you doing, Richard? I'm doing pretty good. We're really, I'm really excited about seeing what you've got in store for us in the February issue. So give us some clues here. Oh, I got some great stuff coming up, Richard. Richard, you know, you we both have been around bodybuilding many years. You know, one of the big issues, one of the main controversies in bodybuilding is late night eating. I mean, how, oh, yeah. how many times have you been kind of told to, you know, you can't have any food intake past six o'clock uh, and the usual reasoning is that your metabolism slows as the hours go by, especially towards sleep. And any yeah. any calories you eat are going to like stay around your waist. They're going to keep you fat. Even if you don't get fatter, it's going to kind of blunt the effects of the diet. You're kind of working against yourself. Well, in this article, I'm going to tell the truth about it. You know, and uh, there is some truth, but there's also some misunderstandings. I'm going to go into detail. So the first article is going to be on late night eating. All the facts, somebody reading this will know the entire truth. Then, you know... Great, I can't wait for that one. Oh, listen. Hey, how many times... Have you ever had a tendon injury, Richard? I don't know if you've had tendon... Oh, yeah. Every, yeah. Everybody's had some kind of tendon injury. And, I've, and a frequent question I've been asked over the years is, is there any way to uh, nutritionally to protect your tendons and... In the event that you get a tendon injury, is there something you could eat or a supplement you could take that will help heal the tendon faster? Now, this is an important uh, concept because tendons are connective tissue, have a notoriously bad blood supply. Normally, they take months to heal. Well, in this article, I'm going to talk about what causes tendon injuries, ways to avoid it, and I'm going to talk about everything known to mankind in the nutritional sense that'll speed the healing of your tendons. I'm not going to go into some of the medical therapies because then the article would have been 40 pages, 50 pages <laughs> long, you know. Yeah. But I mentioned them in passing, some of the, uh, the available therapy. But the article is going to focus on what causes tendon, tendon injuries, how to treat them, and how to help them heal. So that's the next one. Well, I can't wait for that one because I've had some tendon injuries and oh, even had to have some I repairs. Have, so and let me tell you, I'm excited. And let me tell you, I, I mean, I, I don't want to give away both our ages, but the truth of the matter <laughs> is, as you get older, yeah. and I mentioned this in my article, the tendons in the connective yeah. tissue, any guy who's over 40 will confirm this, the tendons get to be a little drier and brittle, and this opens up the door yeah. to injury. So this article is especially relevant if you're over 40. So, but well, I think any any athlete that's competed on the national and international level is going to have tendon issues. So this is a great. This is good that you're, you're talking about. It's this. An, almost inevitable. Almost yeah. inevitable. If you train hard, if you train hard, if, exactly. if you're one of those guys that you know messes around with two <laughs> dumbbells, don't worry about. It. Skip to the next article, which will be another co controversy, huge. And this involves uh, a lot of guys who are on testosterone replacement therapy, a lot of guys over 40, and younger guys too, if they show low testosterone, a lot of times there's an indication for them to take some testosterone. Well, that's, that therapy spread all over the, oh, the country. I mean, it's, it's, a it's big, huge. Low T, yeah. it's a big thing now, you know? But yeah. there's a problem with uh, <clears throat> estrogen. A, a lot of guys worry about estrogen because when you take testosterone, there's an enzyme in your body all over the place, especially in the peripheral fat areas like the legs and the arm. It's called mm -hmm. aromatase. And aromatase takes that testosterone and converts about 8 to 10% of it into estrogen. And a lot of guys, you know, the bodybuilders, as you know, Richard, the guys who take huge amounts of steroids, they take drugs to either block estrogen like Nopidex, yes. block it at the receptor level, or they take drugs like Arimidex, which is a aromatase inhibitor, which completely knocks out the enzyme altogether. So your body makes literally no estrogen for, or very little estrogen from the testosterone. Here's the, here's the point, though. Now, should you be taking, should you be routinely taking 
something that blocks estrogen when you're taking testosterone. Now, this applies to both drug-using bodybuilders and guys on testosterone. And there's a lot of doctors who give out testosterone, much to their credit, by the way, because some doctors will refuse to give testosterone because they think it causes prostate cancer or heart disease. Well, which it doesn't, yeah. Which it doesn't. That's, uh, it's estrogen that does that. Too much estrogen, estrogen, right? Estrogen is very bad in large amounts. Yeah. I, I discuss yeah. why. But yeah. what they're finding out is, is that, you know, Estrogen's a double-edged sword. It does some good things. Like, for example, it maintains bone mass in men just like it does yeah. in women. It does a couple of other things, which I cover in the article. But my article will, will definitively discuss whether or not a man should routinely take something that blocks estrogen when he's using testosterone. And as usual, I'll have information in there that has appeared nowhere else. Nowhere else. And, and most doctors, this article, by the way, I would strongly recommend doctors read who are, who are either giving out TRT or considering it because it'll enlighten them as to, you know, which patients to possibly prescribe a uh, estrogen blocker inhibitor to. So, by the way, I just suggested my doctor subscribe to your newsletter. Oh, yeah, and I have actually quite a few doctors reading it, and I, and I, I get yeah. very good feedback from And you have to understand, Richard, as a subscriber, you know this is true. I don't write in medical ease or, or scientific jargon. And if I do have to use a, let's say, a, a, a complicated medical term, I always explain it because that's what that's what a professional. Yeah, is. that's helpful. I don't take into account that everybody reading it knows uh, what aromatase means, for example, or what five alpha reductase does. I don't. I don't assume that people know that. I will explain it, but that. And anyway, that's that article. And the last one said still another controversial article. This one. Hey, did you, let me ask you, Richard. Have you ever used or heard of a supplement called Tribulus? I've heard of it, but I haven't used it. Tribulus is is epidemic in so-called testosterone boosting supplements. Yeah, it's basically an herb. It's uh, grown all over Europe, especially in the mountains. Early studies showed if you give it to animals, especially rams for some reason, rats, rodents, cats, you give it to them, it has an aphrodisiac effect. It causes them to mate. It causes them to extract to go through the roof. Uh, it, it raises testosterone up to 50, 60 percent in animal. Because of that, they extrapolated that. They said, okay, let's give it to humans. Some early mm -hmm. studies from Bulgaria, which were done by a couple of, uh, you know, guys in a Russian prison somewhere. <laughs> they, were, <laughs> yeah. they were badly done. They showed rises. You know, sure enough, you know, you give triplets to a human, their, their testosterone. Since then, though, the human studies that were done here in the United States and elsewhere, mm -hmm. uh, they unfortunately came up bust. They didn't show a lot of testosterone. They're still in the supplements. In my article, I discuss the truth about Tribulus. I discuss why some of those studies probably didn't show any effect from Tribulus. And I also, uh, the, the, uh, the really interesting part is I discuss something brand new that they found out about tri Tribulus, brand new. They didn't know this before. That shows that Tribulus may actually work to increase exercise recovery, not so huh. through the root of testosterone, through another route. It might help you recover and Work, be able to train with more intensity. I discussed. This. Wow, I hadn't heard that. Yeah, you know, this is. I didn't know about it myself till I researched this brand new stuff. And that's yep. this is why I subscribe to your newsletter right there. Well, you know, see, my philosophy about the newsletter, Richard, I, is that I don't want to cover the same stuff that everyone else is doing. In other words, I try and get little off the road stuff. I want to answer questions that readers have, but I want to cover stuff that you know you're not going to find all over the internet. You're certainly not going to find it in the magazines today. There's nothing. Yeah. I mean, if you want to read about uh, Mr. Basketball's workout, can you buy Muscle and yeah. Fitness? There's nothing else worth reading in there. But anyway, the point is that uh, I'm trying to uh, find stuff that most people don't know and that would have an interest in. That's the bottom line. Uh, it's practical information. There's a couple, of, like I say, there's a, uh, there's other newsletters. They write about stuff like uh, you know the effect of. Uh, intestinal bacteria in female rodents. It's interesting stuff, but yeah. really has no application to a guy on the street. He's want, he wants to know what this bacteria is, you know, might do for him. That's the, that's yeah. the route I take. I try and make it practical. So that, that's basically it. Well, we're, we're doing these so our uh, listeners and people who watch these videos will know about AppliedMetabolics.com where they can get the latest in scientific research on training and nutrition. Thanks a lot, Jerry. Really appreciate it. Sure, Richard. Great to talk to you.